Week 12, problem 9. Light of wavelength 650 nanometers passes through a pair of slits that are 23 micrometers wide and 225 micrometers apart. How many bright interference fringes are there in the central diffraction maximum? All right, so now we're combining the two concepts. We have both single slit diffraction and double slit interference. So I'm going to do double slit interference and diffraction. Let's see what this gives me. Hmm. Come on, still thinking. Really? Can't be this one. There we go. Here's the concept here. So we have an envelope that's created by this by the single slit diffraction, but since it's double slit, we're going to have peaks within it. So we're going to have um, kind of a combination of both. And what it's asking is, how many of these peaks are there in the first portion? So what we're going to do is we're going to draw it real quick and find the size of, ooh, wait a second, can I, can I do that? Copy image, paste, does that work? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, oh, you're so slow at thinking. You're so slow at thinking. Maybe I can draw it quicker. Are you still thinking? Ah, I guess I'm committed at this point. All right. So. Ah, you are really taking a while. There we go. Man. You internet, you're so slow. Well. Now I'm gonna use it. All right. So we're going to use our two formulas. We have for the single slit, we're going to have y equals m. I think you're thinking too hard now, buddy. M lambda d over a. A for aperture. Oh, yep, we got it the equals. We have y equals mm, equals m lambda d over uh, separation between the slits for double slit. So this, will, this guy here will be single, and this guy here will be double. Hmm, you are having trouble. All right, so what we're gonna do then is we're gonna find out, we're gonna compare the two. So we know we're both going to look at, let's see here. So for the double slit, which will be the small ones, we're going to find out how wide each of those is, r. So the distance to the first maximum will be um, lambda, which I think is what, 550? I think it's like 550. Nope, you're going to stay there. 650. So we have 650 times 10 to the negative ninth. And then we're going to multiply that by the distance. We give it, what are we giving a distance? We're giving a distance. So what I'm going to do then is divide both sides by D. Kind of get rid of this guy. So now we're just looking for the ratio. Get rid of that guy too. Alright, and then for the distance between the two, we're going to have 225 micrometers. 2, 2, 5. 5 times 10 to the negative 6. 5 times 10 to the negative 6. All right, so cancel, cancel. We're left with 10 to the negative third on the top. 10 to the negative third times. So it's going to do, hmm. So kind of, kind of like that. So we're going to do 0 0.65, 0 0.65 divided by 225. Mm, okay. And that gives us 2.8 times 10 to the negative third. All right. So now we have 2.8 times 10 to the negative third meters for each um, each of the small inside peaks. All right, so now we're gonna find the side of a big peak. Now, this is, I, mm, 
this is actually unitless. This is going to be just 2.8 times 10 to the negative third because this is not actually the distance. This is the um, uh, angle, the radians. So it's going to be how the angle of each of them because it's y, the height, divided by the d, the distance of the screen. But it'll give us the same idea. Trust me. Hang on. Hang with me here. All right. So then for the second part, we're going to have the same, same wavelength. So we, they're going to be 650 times 10 to the negative ninth nanometers. You know, I'm not using a lot of colors here. I'm going to switch over to blue. Just, yeah. I should, I should really use more colors. And then the aperture, which was 23 times 10 to the negative 6. Cancel, cancel. 10 to the negative third equals 0 0.65 divided by 23. And that should give us a much larger number. 2.8 times 10 to the negative second. So I'm going to call it 28 times 10 to the negative third. Okay? So the idea here is there's going to be about 10 of these guys. So the distance, the first one, hmm? so this distance right here, we're going to measure this in, I guess, millimeters, because they're, what, 10 to the thirds? 10 to the negative, 10 to the negative thirds. So we're going to measure this in millimeters. So right here, this distance right here is going to be 28. This distance so this distance right here is going to be 2.8, and then this guy will be another 2.8, and this guy will be another 2.8. And we'll be able to fit 10 of these guys. Let's make sure real quick. So what we're really doing is 225 divided by 23, which is not quite 10. So it's going to be a total of 9. So I'll we'll have 9 of these guys up here, and then we'll have nine of these guys down here. Now we can't count the actual last one because it'll end at a minimum, is that right? So it comes up, comes down, so we'll have one, two, three, and it'll keep going on, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it'll hit a minimum, and it'll hit a minimum. So. I'm going to say we're going to have 9 up top, 9 on bottom, and then 1 in the middle. So I'm going to say for this case then, we're going to have 9 plus 9 plus 1, 18 plus 1 is going to be 19. We're going to have a total of 19 um, bright interference fringes in the middle. Um, you get 10 guesses here, so if you get this wrong, it gets a little bit higher, it gets a little bit lower. Maybe try 21. Maybe try a little bit less. I don't know. Follow your heart, or 17. The, the idea here is you're going to find out how many of these small guys are tied to the big guy. So in this case, 28 times 10 to the negative third divided by 2.8 times 10 to the third. But since it's slightly less, um, it doesn't quite fit that many in. I'm going to say it's 9 on top, 9 on bottom, and 1 in the middle. Okay? So the second question is how many bright fringes are there in the whole? pattern. Okay? So, hmm. So this ratio is going to hold for every single one. So if you see here, I hope you can't see there, but the idea is we're going to have the same number of peaks in every single, um, uh, I guess, envelope. So every big peak that's associated to the single slit we're going to have the same number of peaks from the small guys in there. So we just need to find out how many uh, large peaks there are going to be. So the large peaks are going to be due to the single slit. And we're going to have y over d. So we have theta, which is y over d. And we know that the biggest that's going to be is 90 degrees, or pi over 2, which will be m lambda over a which will be hmm, hmm, m lambda over a. So this will be, so m equals pi a over m lambda. No, we don't want the m. So 
Hmm? Hi. This guy goes up there. Ah, two. That's the one I was forgetting. Yep. Which is pi times aperture, which is, we just had that, 23 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay. Over 2 times 650 times 10 to the negative 9th. Cancel, cancel. This will be 10 to the negative third on bottom, which will become 10 to the third on top, which will be 23,000 pi over 2. Hmm, that seems like a lot. Hmm, maybe. So, 23, 1, 2, 3 times pi over 2. 3, 6, 1, 2, 8. Equals 3, 6, 1, 2, 8. 3, 6, 1, 2, 8. And that's the number of... Um, large um, maximums we're going to have from single slit. And since there's going to be 10, um, 10 maximum peaks for every large single slit uh, maximum, we're going to multiply that by 10. So then, total number of peaks will be 361,283. How many bright fringes are there in the whole pattern? Many. Specifically, 361,000. 361,283. Ah, but well, one thing I forgot. I only counted the ones on top. So, now I'll get rid of most of these. So I'll take this guy, multiply it by 10. And then we'll add one for the center. So three six one two eight four. Now I can be right. Ah, times ten times two. There we go. Seven two two. Seven hundred and twenty two thousand. That seems like a lot. Hmm. Should probably come back and check that guy. Five, six, seven. Bam. Many, many bright interference patterns in the whole pattern. When you look from zero angle to two pi. So we check that again, make sure I didn't go totally off the rails, which I may have. So theta is uh, y over d, true, opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case we're going to say equals pi over 2. So pi over 2 times. I don't even know what that is. What is that? Hmm. And I gotta say it's not important. Pi over two times a over lambda. Okay, and that'll give us the total number. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. So then, multiply this out. We have ten to the negative six up here. Ten to the negative ninth down there. Hmm. That seems reasonable. So 23 pi, 23 times pi divided by 2 times 650, 2 times 650, and multiply that by a thousand, which is 10 to the third. That's not what I wanted. Mm, 55. Why did I get such a smaller number that time? Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to go with the 55. That seems much more reasonable. 
and then again I'm going to multiply it by 10, multiply it by 2, and add 1. 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay. Boom. I'm going to say that the total diffraction pattern here is 1,111. So I'll probably revisit this guy later, make sure I did him right. But until then, this is problem 9 on problem 10.